Today we're looking at the Heath Zenith motion detector. It's the cheapest one that Home Depot carries at about $15. It has a 150 degree motion sensor. It automatically operates at night and it has die cast metal construction. And it's UL approved. Opening the box reveals a manual. And it's multi-language, which is nice. We have a gasket. A mounting bracket, screws, and two wire nuts. And a plug to seal uh, probably an exposed screw, probably this one, so that water doesn't leak into the unit since it is meant to be outdoors. One really nice feature of this installation kit is this piece of plastic here. This is just a plastic hanger. And you're going and you're going to use this to hang this fixture off the socket while you're making all your connections. Just a really nice touch. Upon unpacking, the first thing you'll notice is that Yes, there is die cast metal here, base, not the sensor, that's all plastic. Plastic through there, plastic in here, and in here. That looks like, this piece right here looks like it's uh, metal, the plastic down here. So it's not, the whole thing is not die cast metal. It's $15, so. I think they're going to give you about as much as they can get away with and still uh, make it at a reasonable price. The inside socket looks of decent quality. You know, I'm uh, surprised that there's no gasket for the bulbs. I've seen other makes where a gasket's included so that no water seeps in. In theory, you're going to be pointing these down, but, you know, in a, in a rainstorm, strong winds could force water up into the socket, which you wouldn't want. For those of you anti-LED, the max you can go is 150 watts per socket. One nice thing I'm noticing is uh, no tools are required to adjust the light socket. And the sensor does have one screw that looks like you can tighten down when you finally position it. And the sensor has a timing mechanism. One, five, ten minutes. So once it's triggered, those are the intervals for which it would stay on. There's a test mode where it constantly just goes on and off depending on uh, what triggers the uh, the sensor there and then you can set the range normally these are just left at max but you might find a reason for your particular application where you want less of a range this down here is an LED and it'll glow if it detects motion regardless of whether it needs to trigger on the lights so let's say during the day you'll see this come on if you walk in front of it and of course the lights won't turn on. But at night, this would trigger plus you'd see the lights come on. If hanging this from a wall, you want to make sure that you look at the arrow for this end up. And that's with the two sockets on top. That's the way it's recommended for install. The sensor has a side that also needs to be facing up regardless of whether it's under an eave or up against a wall. So you have to just make note of that writing. And of course, it's suitable for what location as long as you use that gasket. And if you feel more comfortable, you can probably add a little silicone caulking to that gasket to uh, super seal it. But uh, this hangs under an eave, so it should be well protected. And I don't see going to that extra step. One of the first things you want to do before climbing up and trying to install this is to at least set up the angles 
and where you want the lights facing and the sensor before you climb up because it's much easier to do it now and what I'm doing is I'm using the edge of this table to simulate my garage the garage doors are here I want this area to be sensed and there's a walkway I want that area to be sensed so if I mount my sensor with 150 degrees it should pick up in front of the garage door and the sidewalk leading up to the front door. I'll have a light aimed towards the driveway and then the other light lighting the walkway. And because no tools are required you can also just quickly make some adjustments when you're finally up there. The challenge today is to take this brand new sensor security light and put it up here replace the uh, the old just plain par lights that are up there so that when somebody drives up or walks up the driveway the lights come on because right now it has to manually be done in order to prep for this I took all the parts that came in the box with this and put them in a container so that they're easy to find don't get lost tools a screwdriver wire cutter diagonal cutter um, voltage tester make sure there's no power up there some electrical tape pair of gloves what else oh a ladder so first thing I need to do is go up there and there's a screw in between the two lights and that needs to be removed so I can test for uh, voltage up there and if there's no voltage then just remove the fixture of course I have to remove those lights first get those out of the way as you can see the fixture is dropped from the ceiling and I'm gonna use my tester to see if we have any power and I have a flashing red light a fast flashing red light which means there is voltage on the black cable which you probably can't see the color of the neutral is clean so even though the thing is this is a um, there are two switches that can operate this fixture so that's why there's a lead that's hot even though the switches are off uh, because the voltage has to travel through to the other switch so that regardless of which one you flip you can turn the power on this means I have to go to the fuse box and turn the power off to this circuit which is always a smart thing to do anyway but I thought I could get away with just the light switch off I should have known better knowing that it was a three-way switch that was being used for this with the circuit off I once again check with the tester and we're good to go so instead of having a conduit box it's just wood it's the way they did things back in the day uh -huh. so what I'm doing is I just repurposed the original screws the wood screws ran the new bracket across using my little hanger here so I can hang the actual fixture here so I can wire up the black to black white to white and there's a ground wire coming off so I'll secure that also and hopefully that'll work since there's no clearance here everything needs to be fed back through that hole okay at this point we have black to black with a wire nut on it also put some electrical tape to protect it and same thing with the white to white I need to get my ground hooked up but that's going to actually attach to the light because there's a ground nut on that uh, so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to feed these wires up in, into that hole get that slack out of the way of course got the gasket in make sure you do that before you start wiring otherwise it won't work so get the wire into the ceiling uh, secure this bracket to the other side and then we should be able to put our screw through the base attach it to the center of this bracket and we should be done wires are concealed in the ceiling our gasket is in position 
the two screws to hold down the bracket are in position. So all I have to do now is use the long center screw. And that's going to go up the middle here of this base and go through the bracket. And that'll hold the whole thing in place and the gasket will make it waterproof. Make sure you orientate this in the way that you want it before you screw that down. Our plate is mounted with a single screw. I still need to put the plug. There's a little white plug that comes with the kit, need to install that so no moisture can get up in there or bugs. And I have a light going towards the driveway and the other one going towards the walkway. With the sensor in the test mode, we're gonna flip the circuit breaker and see if this puppy lights up. Success, both lights come on. And now we'll just let the test time out. So light has gone out. If I move back, it triggers. Great. So this is how you do it. And then once you're done with test mode, just set it to one, five, or ten minutes, whichever you want. If you're using CFLs, which you shouldn't be using, uh, set it to the max. Otherwise, you're going to burn those puppies out prematurely. You're better off with LEDs, incandescents, or halogens. But LEDs will be the cheapest to operate. If you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, please subscribe and thank you for watching.